Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis with another rheumatology video. In the previous video, I've talked about human leukocytic antigen. Today, I'll talk about HLA B27, which is part of the major histocompatibility complex class 1. And let's get started. Let's review the previous videos. We have rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid factor, and anti-CCP. Rheumatoid factor, which is an IgM antibody against the FC portion of IgG, is more sensitive. Anti-CCP is less sensitive. Rheumatoid factor, less specific. Anti-CCP, the opposite, more specific. Both of them correlate with the disease activity. The higher the titer, the more likely you have worse symptoms and extra-articular manifestations. Next, we have lupus, anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith, anti-U1 RNP, anti-ribosomal P protein. Specific, specific, not specific, specific. This one is associated with lupus nephritis and lupus vasculitis. This anti-ribosomal P protein is associated with CNS problems and liver disease. Let's talk about Jogrin, anti-SSA and anti-SSB. SS stands for Jogrin syndrome. Both of them are associated with lupus and Jogrin. They are not sensitive or specific. They are associated with neonatal lupus and congenital heart block. And if you have either of them with Jogren syndrome, you have an increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Please don't forget that. Then we've talked about hypocomplementemia. You have decreased level of C4 in lupus. You can also have decreased C3 and C4. Conditions that have hypocomplementemia are here. And of course, lupus is there. Early complement deficiency, C1, C2, C4 is associated with lupus. Late complement deficiency, C5 to C9 associated with Neisseria infections, and I'm always missing an E here. How to diagnose complement deficiency? We start by measuring CH50. It's a screening test, and it measures the classical pathway. If the classical pathway is overactivated, CH50 is going to be decreased. This is called overconsumption. This is called economics. If it's low, then we should go fishing and order more tests. If you have a patient and you suspect an autoimmune disease, order the early complement, C1, C2, and C4. If the, you suspect they have Neisseria, gonorrhea, or meningitis, order the late complement C5 to C9. We started talking about human leukocytic antigens in the previous video. They are antigens on the surface of the leukocytes in human beings. We have three classes of major histocompatibility complex, class 1, 2, and 3. We care about 1 and 2 right now. In class 1, we have HLA, A, B, and C. They interact with the CD8 and the T suppressor cell. The class 2 interacts with the CD4 cell, and the mnemonic 8 times 1 is 8, and 4 times 2 is 8. We have discussed that in the previous video, no problem. To be able to draw it from scratch, we have class 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. D is here, D, P, Q, R, as the AKG start with the P wave, and R has 2, 3, and 4. You can make me happy and you can make grandma happy by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and getting my 50 hematology cases. Human leukocytic antigens. Again, human versions of the major histocompatibility complex. Class 1 MHC has HLA, A, B, and C. HLAA3 associated with hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis has iron overload. Remember FE3 for the A3. Then we have the HLA-B27. I cannot have a mnemonic for that. B27 is too rough for me. Seronegative spondyloarthropathies, and we're going to talk about that. HLA-B8, Graves disease, Addison disease, and myasthenia gravis. My mnemonic, the cruel O2 antibodies. 8, my thyroid, my adrenals, and my energy. HLA-B27 antigen. They are proteins found on the surface of the leukocytes. That's why we call them human leukocytic antigens. They are class 1 MHC because 1 was A, B, and C, and we're talking about B here. They present antigens from self or non-self to the T lymphocyte. This is called antigen presentation. If it's part of us, peace, man, give it a pass. But if it's part of the non-self, baby, it's on. Since they are part of class 1 MHC, 
they will interact with the cytotoxic T lymphocyte. Look at the name, cytotoxic. They are toxic to the cell. Do you think you're gonna have symptoms when you have this crazy process? You betcha. Seronegative spondyloarthropathies. Why do we call them seronegative? Because they are negative for rheumatoid factor. Yes, they are positive for HLA-B27, but they are negative for rheumatoid factor. That's why we call them seronegative spondyloarthropathies. I really lose it when a student tells me, I missed the definition of HLA on my exam. Um, honey, they are called human leukocytic antigen. They are antigens or proteins found on the surface of leukocytes in human. If you understand English, you can you can uh, write the definition. So easy, my goodness. And those human leukocytic antigens help us differentiate between the self and the non-self. Seronegative spondyloarthropathies. They are rheumatoid factor negative. That's why we call them seronegative. But they are HLA-B27 positive. And they are psoriatic arthritis ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease associated arthritis, also known as enteropathic arthritis, and reactive arthritis. Some students use the mnemonic PAIR, and I don't care. Then we have healthy Caucasians, 7% of them will have HLA-B27 positive, and they are perfectly fine, they will be perfectly fine, no problem with that. So please don't be fooled. Just because you have HLA-B27 doesn't mean that you have the disease. Also, in acute anterior uveitis, you can have HLA-B27 positive. Some bullet points. HLA do not interact with B lymphocytes. They only interact with the T lymphocytes and maybe the natural killer cells. Psoriatic arthritis is associated with HLA-C, W6, HLA-B27, HLA-B38, 39. Let's add 40. Oh, I'm sorry, kidding. Whereas cutaneous psoriasis, when you have psoriasis only in the skin, HLAC. So C for cutaneous and all of them are for the arthritis, the joint pain. In malaria endemic region, HLAB27 antigen is rare and therefore ankylosing spondylitis is rare in these areas, believe it or not. Just because you have positive HLAB27 doesn't necessarily mean you have ankylosing spondylitis. This is not aortic stenosis, we're talking rheumatology here. Remember that 7 to 8 percent of Caucasians who are normal will have positive HLA-B27. If you have a 69 year old female with back pain that's worse at the end of the day, please do not order HLA-B27, you're wasting your time and her money. Why not? First, she's 69. People with ankylosing spondylitis are usually males in their 20s. And she's female, so it's even less likely. And, which is really important, the back pain is worse at the end of the day. By definition, this is a mechanical pain, wear and tear, and this is not an inflammatory pain. So, if you suspect it's called what? Ankylosing spondylitis. It's in an itis. It's an inflammatory arthritis. It's not mechanical. She has a mechanical problem. Don't suspect an inflammatory process. Don't waste your time and her money by ordering this garbage test. She doesn't need it. And let's say she came back positive. You will scare her to death. I think you have ankylosing. Shut up. She's fine. You're just weird. I've told you 7% of Caucasians have positive HLA-B27 and it means absolutely nothing. Remember rheumatology? Does the lab result correlate with the clinical picture? I keep repeating myself and you keep doing making the same mistakes. God help us. In case you forgot, we have rheumatological diseases subclassified into non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Non-inflammatory such as osteo. No cardinal signs of inflammation. Symmetrical problem because it's wear and tear. Sorry, asymmetrical because it's wear and tear. Worse in the evening, at the end of the day, because it's mechanical. Because at the end of the day, you have lots of wear and tear during the day. At the end of the day, it's really bad. And ESR and CRP are normal. And B27 should not be high. If it's high, it's probably because 7% of Caucasians already have it. Come on. Inflammatory arthritis, on the other hand, such as ankylosing spondylitis and all of the pair, I don't care, mnemonic, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease associated arthritis, and reactive arthritis, all of them have our inflammatory arthritis. 
We have coronal signs of inflammation, yes indeed, symmetrical because the auto antibodies don't care. Worse in the morning and as the day progresses, you wash out the inflammatory debris and your symptoms improve. The lady in the previous slide, her pain was worse in the evening, so it was mechanical. Don't waste your time on a B27 test. ESR and CRP and inflammatory arthritis should be high, that's why we call them acute phase reactants which I've talked about in a previous video. Post-infectious syndrome. Let's have you, let's say you have shigellosis or Yersinia enterocolitica or enterocolitica or salmonella or chlamydia. Then one to three weeks later after the acute infection, you can develop post-infectious syndrome. You will have symptoms of reactive arthritis, maybe arthritis and maybe conjunctivitis. You know the mnemonic? can't see, can't pee, can't bend my knee. This is commoner in patients with HLA-B27 antigen. If you have HLA-B27 positive antigen, you're more likely to get post-infectious syndrome one to three weeks after one of these infections. So you start with abdominal pain, cramps, bloody diarrhea, or symptoms of chlamydia or whatever. Then one to three weeks later, you develop joint pain, which is oligo or polyarthritis, asymmetrical and peripheral reactive arthritis. And this is called post-infectious syndrome. Of course, we're gonna talk about reactive arthritis in detail in a future video. I'm just priming you like the farmer who primes the water pump and like the interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha that prime the neutrophil causing degranulation. If you didn't get it, watch my video on C. anca versus P. anca. Thank you for watching. Please support my channel. Your support is greatly needed. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you so much in advance. Smash like, subscribe, save this playlist, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis to get all of my notes, all of my illustrations, and my 50 hematology cases. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.